bring in now Republican Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina uh, on this and really what is a historic moment for the entire world, it seems. Uh, starting with the issue of Iran, Senator Graham, uh, White House mm -hmm. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan did say today that Iran is, in his words, complicit in a broad sense, but that the intelligence community yeah. has not assessed that they knew about yeah. the attack in advance or helped to plan yeah. it. But I wonder, do you yeah. think that that is plausible, that this attack could have been uh, executed no. without direct support from <laughs> Iran? Absolutely not. This was a coordinated land, sea, air attack that had to be months in the making. Uh, there is no way in the world that this happened without Iran knowing. If you know the relationship between Iran and Hamas, that's impossible to leave. I think the Wall Street Journal reporting will prove to be correct over time. But try to put this in context. You've had a lot of people on the show that break your heart. Here's where Israel finds itself. It's almost like World War II. Gaza has been radicalized by over generations. I think we can do business with the Palestinian Authority. We can't do business with Hamas. So Israel's going to have to go in and dismantle Hamas like we took down the Germans and the Japanese. They're going to have to reoccupy the Gaza Strip and build up a new generation that will be better for the Palestinian people in Gaza and better for Israel. It's going to take a destruction of Hamas like we destroyed the Third Reich, uh, and a reoccupation to get a new generation of people who really do buy into peace. And as long as Iran goes unchecked, nothing changes. Hmm. I, uh, you have said recently that the U.S. should threaten Iranian oil infrastructure if yeah. the conflict continues to escalate. I want to be clear. Are you yeah. calling for the U.S. to become directly involved in this war with Hamas? We're already directly involved. 14 Americans are dead tonight. Um, to but their to families, the, I'm sorry. But to the degree that we would... They would be alive would... today without the Iranians. But Just to... listen to me. They'd be alive today without Iran building up Hamas. Here's what I'm saying. I want to be very clear. If you kill the hostages, the Hamas has hostages, Americans and Israeli hostages, they start killing those hostages. If there's an attack by Hezbollah in the north creating two fronts for Israel, what I would do is I would bomb Iran's oil infrastructure. The money financing terrorism comes from Iran. It's time for this terrorist state to pay a price for financing and supporting all this chaos. Yes, if you're the Iranians, if it were up to me, this war escalates, I'm coming after you. I think this is what I'm trying to clarify here because I, I, I'm wondering us if- Us in you're, Israel, us in Israel. Us, the United States no, and no, Israel- No, I want to be crystal clear. The United. Let me, just, let me just let me just let me just understand yeah, you. Yes, just sorry. to be clear, you're saying yeah. that you would want the United States and Israel to bomb Iran, even in the absence you of direct it. evidence of their involvement in this uh, attack. Yeah. So if there's an escalation, Abby, if there's people's throats being cut on television as Israel goes into Gaza and they're threatening to kill the hostages. If Hezbollah is unleashed on Israel in the north, it will be because Iran is supporting that. If you don't get the connection between Iran and this terrorist activity by Hamas and Hezbollah, you're missing a lot. This is a terrorist state that has American blood on its hands. It is now time to dismantle the financing system of terrorism if this war escalates. Yes, I would do a joint military operation. I tell the Iranians today, if the war escalates, you will pay a price. You will be out of the oil business. I want to be crystal clear on that. And if we don't do that, what do you expect to happen in the future? Do you expect Israel to forgive and forget? Biden didn't mention one word about Iran today. And I want to support the president. I'm supporting the Saudi-Israel peace deal. Israel made peace with several Arab countries through the Abraham Accord. Courts. I want to help the Palestinians we can do business with as part of a Saudi-Israel peace deal. But I'm tired of letting Iran, I think they did this to stop the Saudi-Arab mm. peace negotiations, the Iranians. I don't want to reward them. I want to punish them. So, Senator, can I ask you now about what's happening here in the United States? Republicans on Capitol Hill, your yeah. colleagues, especially in the House, are debating whether or not to fund uh, Israel and Ukraine. Some of them don't want to fund Ukraine at all and only yeah. want to fund Israel. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, but my, my yeah. question to you is, do you think the U.S. risks being stretched too thin uh, with these two incredibly significant conflicts happening at the same time, requiring quite a lot of American resources? <clears throat> yeah, no, not really. Um, you know, my dad fought in Japan and I had an uncle fought in Germany. America fought the Germans and the Japanese at the same time. Not one American has died in Ukraine. To my Republican colleagues who believe that we should pull the plug on supporting Ukraine, if you think Putin's going to stop at the Ukraine, you're not paying any attention. China's watching everything we do. So I think it would be really ill-conceived to not support Ukraine. They've destroyed half the Russian military. Uh, we spent less than 5% of our defense budget, and not one American has died. This has been a good investment. Putin will keep going if we don't stop him in Ukraine. As to Iran, if there's an escalation of this war against Israel, I'm blaming Iran. And it's now time to put them on notice. They will pay a heavy price. I think we can do all those things. I think if there was a war with Iran, we would win. I think the Ukrainians are going to beat the Russians if we stick with them. And if you don't stick with the, uh, the Ukrainians, then there goes Taiwan. To my Republican friends, you're, you're underestimating the effect of Putin's invasion on the future of Europe and stability in the world. To the people on the left who want to blame Israel for this, that's despicable. All right, Senator Lindsey Graham, thank you for joining us tonight.